welcome to or welcome back to my channel. So the last time we were here we spoke about William van der Merwe who was the screwdriver rapist. And if you haven't seen that video I will link it somewhere up here for you. But today we're going to talk about the Springs House of Horrors. And I do just want to give a warning before we actually get into the video. Obviously all of our videos talk on serious topics but this video specifically focuses around the topic of child abuse and obviously it's a very serious topic. So I do just want to say that before we start just so that you know what we're talking about up front. So if you would like to hear about this very scary and horrific tale and how this happened just a few years ago under all of our noses and how the seemingly normal family on the outside was hiding a very, very dark secret on the inside. So if you would like to hear about the Spring House of Horrors, then let's get into it. Intended for mature audiences only. So when looking into this case, I did notice that a lot of the names were withheld except when they actually wanted to say their names or they became of age. And just as my opinion, I do think that the names were withheld because there are still minors now to this day that are involved in this case. They have to protect everyone's names in case they link it to the children. So in this story, we're going to name everybody ourselves unless they specifically tell us their name. That being said, let's start from the beginning. And because we don't know their names, we are going to name the mom of this family, Kay. And we are going to name the dad of this family, Mark. So Kay was 16 years old when she met Mark. And Kay was going through a very difficult time when she met Mark. Her father had just passed away and she was said to have a very difficult relationship with her mother. So very soon after Kay's father passed away, her mother actually got remarried. And according to Kay, what happened was her mother now met this new man. And her mother was like, okay, I got a new husband. I want a new family. All of you, my children before, need to kind of go away. So Kay did have an older sister and Kay and her older sister moved in together. And her older sister worked while Kay still finished school because remember she was 16 at the time. And while she was at school, she met 17-year-old Mark. And I'm not sure if Kay actually wanted to leave school or if Mark was the one who persuaded her to leave school. But basically, they both dropped out of school. And a few months after they first met, they ended up getting engaged and they moved into Mark's parents' house, which was in East Rand in Joburg. Now, remember I said that Kay had an older sister? Well, obviously, like siblings do, they come and visit each other. They come gossip and talk about things that are happening. So her sister would come and visit Mark and Kay. And her sister would often notice very terrible abuse that was happening to her sister. And she actually said that one time when Kay did something really minor. Mark actually pulled Kay and sat down on a chair and pulled her over his lap and started beating her on the bum like a child. Kay's sister would also say that Mark would verbally and physically abuse her while she was there. So if this is happening under Kay's sister's nose and in front of everybody, imagine what Mark is doing to Kay behind closed doors. And when Mark spoke about his childhood, he was said to also not have a very good relationship with his parents. He said that he was often beaten very badly by his father. And Mark said that his father would allow close relatives or close family friends to sexually abuse Mark. And Mark said that his parents would often get into physical fights himself. So his upbringing was not a very stable one. He didn't have very good role models of what a good relationship should be as well as Kay. So these two very troubled teenagers in their own right got together and got engaged. And one day, Mark and Kay had actually been on holiday. So remember, they were staying with Mark's parents. But one day they decided, okay, let's just get out of here. Let's go do our own thing. So they went on holiday and then they got a call from Mark's dad to say that there had been an incident at home and Mark needs to come back like yesterday already. So they get home and Mark walks into the front door and he finds his dad on the floor barely clinging to life and his mother who was lying very close to him who had been shot dead and obviously mark called police and the ambulance the police did their investigations and they said that what they believed is that mark's mother had got into a fight with his father and mark's mom actually ended up shooting the father and then turning the gun on herself so after all of this mark and Kay then went to live with other family relatives until they got back on their feet and they ended up getting married then in february 1998 Kay and mark welcomed their first child and that was a baby girl and her name is actually yolandi yolandi would describe her childhood as very chaotic she said that her dad would often like move from job to job so they were often moving from suburb to suburb and from province to province so when Yolandi was around five years old her mom gave birth to a baby boy and 
for the story, we'll call him Dean. So Mark and Kay, mom and dad, now had two children, Yolandi and Dean. And I'm not sure if Mark didn't want another child or just something triggered him to have this baby boy, but apparently he was incredibly mean to Dean from the get-go. And Yolandi would recall that when Dean was around two, he would try and get his dad's attention, as babies do, and he would like kind of waddle over to his dad, and whenever he did that, his dad would slap him across the face. And Yolandi also remembered that when Dean and her were in the back of like a bucky, their mom and dad were driving in front, and Mark really wanted like slap chips. And when they were driving, he noticed that he didn't have any fork to eat his chips with. So he took it out on Dean. And what he did was he pulled over the car, he smacked Dean. And remember, he's still a child, basically dragged him out of the car, left him on the side of the road, and he made Dean run after the car in order to get back in. And Yolandi would describe their mom as very distant. Yolandi was never given hugs and kisses apparently and she was kind of left to her own devices from a very young age. So Yolandi did go to school until around grade three and I think we were about nine, eight or nine when we were in grade three. But when she was in grade three and it was the end of the year she got her final report and apparently she failed the year and her dad then pulled her out of school so she didn't go to school after that anymore and his reason was that the world was a very dangerous and scary place and that she would be better homeschool. So Dean, the second child, never went to school because his birth was never registered with Home Affairs. And in 2009, Kay gave birth to another girl. Just a few months later, in 2010, she gave birth to another girl. So now Mark and Kay have four children. They have Yolandi, Dean, and the two younger girls. So when Yolandi was around 12 years old, they moved into a double-story house in Springs, which is in Johannesburg. They moved here because Mark got a job as a used car salesman. But Yolandi already noted at 12 years old that the house that they were living in, she always thought, how could they afford this? Because back then, she already noticed that the rent was about 16,000 Rand a month. She never got the answer, obviously, as a child. But later on, she did realize that her dad was selling drugs on the side. And he was also renting out rooms to people to use or to stay overnight in the house. And I'm not sure if it was because Mark was selling drugs that he developed a habit or that he already had the habit and that's why he started selling to other people. But Mark eventually started using a lot of drugs, very serious drugs, and he then made Kay, his wife, use the drugs as well. And Yolandi would say that her dad always looked really neat. So no matter what, he always had a shaved beard, a very neat haircut, and he would wear nice clothes. And because they were in this really big house, Mark decided to build a gym inside the house in one of the rooms. And it was rumored, so apparently Mark would take steroids. And some of the facts that I know about steroids, obviously I don't know everything about them, but I have heard that they may increase the level of anger in people. So maybe that was a factor to what continued to go on throughout the years. But like I said, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not a doctor. So obviously Yolandi and Dean were older than the two young girls and they kind of learned how to behave. So they basically tread on eggshells the whole time at home. If Mark called them and said, you know, Yolandi, Dean, come here, they would run. They would drop everything and make sure that they were at their dad's beck and call like that. Because if they didn't, Mark would just turn around and smack them or throw something at them if they took too long. I'm not sure if this is maybe because Mark was letting people stay in the house that were random or people, and they may have been men, but Kay would have to follow Mark wherever he went. So if Mark went to work, Kay would have to go with him. If Mark went to get takeaways, Kay would have to go with him. And his control over Kay was so hectic that she had actually given birth to her last child, which was a baby boy. And about a week after she had given birth to him, Mark demanded that she follow him around again. And obviously, if Kay was not around to look after her five children, someone had to. So Yolandi, who was about 12 years old, 13 maybe, had to look after all of these children, which included her younger brother and two toddlers and a baby, a newborn baby. And I did find this a little bit sad in some way, but Yolandi would describe that when her parents would come home, her siblings would often refer to her mom and dad as uncle and auntie instead of mom and dad. And Yolandi was basically their mother figure. But anyway, besides that, so in the story that I'm telling you, none of the children ever went to school. So the toddlers never went to daycare or anywhere out of the house. 
Dean never went to school and Yolandi, remember, only went to school until grade three. And the rule was that because they were at home all the time and you were supposed to go to school, it's illegal not to go to school in South Africa, they would have to stay inside all the time and they could only go play outside after school hours. Sadly, Mark would abuse not only his wife and his two oldest children, but all of the children. Yolandi recalled that one time mark picked up the youngest child which was the baby boy and he threw him across the snooker table so like he would use him as a snooker pool and he would often throw the two younger girls around and if they didn't listen he would often kick them and remember these are toddlers and babies and mark was incredibly controlling and not only to Kay, his wife but also to the children so he apparently installed 32 cameras inside the house in order to watch what his children were doing. And apparently when visitors came to the house, Mark and Kay were on their best behavior. They were loving the children. They were giving them kisses and cuddles and giving them all the attention. But as soon as the guests left, Mark would go back to his very abusive ways and Kay would go back to being very distant. Okay, so now we're gonna get into a bit more of the terrifying things that happened in the house. And remember I said that some of the rooms were rented out by other people. So what would happen is sometimes a lady of the night would use one of the rooms in the house. And it was Yolandi's job to clean the sheets and prep the room for the lady of the night and her customers. And another lady would come in and out of the house often and that was actually a friend of Kay's and she was actually a stripper. So obviously this lady would come into the house and she would do what she needed to do with Mark and Mark would insist that Kay join in and later on during the trial Kay would say that Mark was quite obsessed with sex. He would often demand it all the time and he believed that it was his right as a man to get it whenever he needed it and Kay often said that that she was often sexually assaulted by her husband because she would say no and he didn't care if he wanted it it was happening now. So if we skip forward a few years Yolandi was around 14 years old at the time and her mom and dad would have people over quite often at this age and they would basically do adult entertaining and they would have adult fun together if you catch what I'm trying to say and Yolandi was forced to be a waitress for these people so she would have to bring them drinks clean up whatever mess they were leaving around and also the obviously the glasses and bring them whatever they needed kind of while they were busy in the act so this family just gets more and more ridiculous but one one day Kay's cousin was over at the house and this cousin was a guy and they were all like in the lounge chilling Kay, Mark and Yolandi walks in and I'm not sure if it was Yolandi or if it was Dean but one of the children in the house upset the cousin and Mark asked the cousin what would you like me to do to punish the children so the cousin got up off the chair and walked to the computer and looked up on the internet torture devices and how to torture people. So eventually when he was done researching whatever he needed to, he walked back over to Mark and said, I want you to waterboard the children. So Dean and Yolandi were taken to the bath and they were waterboarded by their own father. And Mark thought this was ingenious because he had never thought of doing this to his children. Who does? And sadly after this, Mark would often use this as a way to torture any and all of his children. So even though all of the children were abused by Mark, sadly, Dean often had most of the beatings and he was often beaten and tied up by his father. And Kay would also say in trial that she was also beaten up by Mark and tied up by Mark. Then ugh, Mark eventually got bored of the waterboarding torture and he decided to buy other torture devices that he could use on his children. Once he even brought home a cattle prod and he would use this on his children. And if you've ever seen a cattle prod or heard a cattle prod, that is not only painful for the cattle that has been used on, but imagine on a child's bare skin. And he would use this device on his children all the time. And he would even put Yolandi and Dean in a bath full of water and put the cattle prod in the water and electrocute them like that. Mark would also bring home air rifles and shoot the children with air rifles. And he would even use pepper spray on Yolandi and Dean if they didn't listen or if they did something to upset him. So I remember I said that Kay would have to go wherever Mark went and obviously Yolandi was expected to look after the children. She would be expected to do that, but she would also be expected to keep the house clean and to buy food and feed them. The entire house, not just the children. And Mark would often just leave about 50 Rand 
on the counter and he would go maybe a week later and that's all that you'd be able to use for the week. To feed a family of seven, 50 rand is not a lot of money to go over a week with. So everyone would often eat two minute noodles or dry pasta and sometimes they would get cooked pasta. Maybe if Mark was feeling nice, he would get them takeaways. But if Mark was upset or if Kay or one of the children upset him, then he would only get takeaways and he would let the children, they must fend for themselves, basically. Now, when Yolandi turned 16, I don't think that birthdays were very celebrated in the family at all. But shockingly to Yolandi, when she was 16 and on her birthday, her dad actually said, come outside, I want to show you something. And he bought her a smart car. And I think she was quite shocked by this. She, Mark said that she could sit in the car. She could feel the car, but she couldn't drive the car because she was 16 and it's illegal to drive here until 18. And then a few days after her birthday, the car just vanished and he took it away from her. Then one day, one of the younger daughters cut her toe or cut her foot and Kay had to take her to the hospital to get stitches. And if the abuse could not get any worse, Mark was alone now with Yolandi and the kids. And what he did was he called Yolandi and he was actually in the bedroom. And we know where this is going. But... Mark called Yolandi to the bedroom and told her, forced her basically to undress and then he sexually assaulted her. And sadly, this was the first time, but it was not the last time that he would do this to her. Then on May 19th, 2014, Mark said that he wanted some takeaways, but he couldn't find his keys. So I don't know why he thought that Dean was the one who took it, but he lashed out at Dean and was like shouting at him, like, give me back my keys. And obviously Dean knew when his dad was getting angry, he knew exactly what was coming. So Dean ran out of the house and went to hide in the back garden somewhere. And while Dean was hiding, his dad actually found the keys. So Dean didn't do anything with the keys, obviously. So Yolandi saw all of this. And when she noticed her dad leave the house, she ran out to the back garden to see where Dean was. And when she got out, she actually noticed Dean climbing over the wall into the neighbor's house. And Yolandi was obviously scared because she knew the consequences if Dean wasn't home when her dad got home. So she ran to her mom, Kay, to tell her what Dean had done. Now, Dean had obviously scaled the fence and he was hiding in the back garden of his neighbor's house. And he kind of got up out of the darkness and walked towards the window and the front door of his neighbor's house. And he noticed that dogs were barking and so obviously did the people inside the house. And at the time, this was the house of Mr. and Mrs. Fenter and they had a daughter. So basically, the daughter was still watching TV and the parents, Mr. and Mrs. Fanta, were in bed. And when they heard the dogs barking, the father got out of bed and came to the front door. And shortly afterwards, his wife followed. Very light tapping on the door. And she got up to have a look. And as she touched the handle of the door, her father was there to tell her, don't just open the door. So he opened the door. Very confusing, but it's important. So the father opened the door and he saw Dean standing there at the front door with nothing but shorts on and this is the middle of winter he only had these little short shorts on and he was completely bare everywhere else. and what the dad noticed as soon as he opened the front door was that dean had scars and bruises everywhere on his body and the first thing that dean said was please don't tell my dad that i'm here mr and mrs fenter are now looking at dean like what are we supposed to do here but they bring him in and give him some jerseys and a blanket the daughter of mr and mrs fenter noted how skinny he was because they gave him jerseys and the jerseys would just fall off his body. Mr. and Mrs. Fenton then asked Dean, you know, why are you here? And Dean said that if I go back, my father's going to kill me. Please, I don't want to go back. And the Fenters are now obviously stressed. They're like, what have we got ourselves into or what just happened, basically? And they obviously wanted to call the police, but they thought that if they did call the police, they would just send him back next door. Now, while they are busy discussing, they hear another knock on the front door. And as they open the door, they notice Yolandi and her mother just behind Yolandi. And Yolandi says very desperately, please can you give my brother back? He needs to come home now. Because if my dad finds out where he is, he's going to be in big trouble. And the Fenters then invite Yolandi and her mother into the lounge. And they're trying to convince Dean, you know, it's okay, come back up, get up, you'll be fine. And they're just about to convince him and he starts getting up off the floor and in storms Mark. And Mark ignores everybody else in the house, walks straight to Dean, smacks him a couple times in the face, in front of everybody, drags him by the arm and takes him back to the house. Yolandi and Kay then look at this and just walk out and follow Mark. And Yolandi turns around to look at the fences and she's like, I'm sorry, thank you. And they quickly then hurry behind Mark. And the fences are then just sitting there gobsmacked at what just happened. And they can't believe that 
this man just walked in and smacked the child just openly, so hectically in front of them. And sadly, when Dean was dragged back to the house, his dad heavily beat him. And Jolandi remembered that Dean was so badly beaten that his eyes had actually shut closed and that he couldn't actually feed himself that night because he couldn't see the food. So Yolandi had to feed him. Then the next day, on the 20th of May, 2014, Mrs. Fenter couldn't get over what she had seen the night before and was really worried about Dean. So she did end up calling the Springs Police Department and she called describing that she was very worried about a boy that had just come over her wall the night before. And she had described everything that happened. And so police did end up going to the house of Mark and Kay and there were 17 police officers who arrived and three social workers. And when they arrived, they removed all the children in the house. But they did hear that there was this boy who climbed over the fence. But when they looked at the only boy that was in the house, he was still a baby, a child. So there was no way that he could climb over the fence. So they knew that there was possibly another boy that was missing. And there was. Dean, they couldn't find him. And they asked Kay, who was the only one there, they asked her, where is this boy? And she said she didn't know. He had run away. And at the time that this all happened, Dean was only 11 years old. And obviously the police had entered first to make sure everything was okay. And then the social workers followed to check if the children were okay. And one of the social workers described the house as being absolutely filthy. There was animal feces everywhere. The house stank of cigarette smoke and had mold everywhere. The children and their clothes were absolutely filthy. And the social worker noticed that the snooker table had very provocative women's clothing on it. There was high heels everywhere, leather, strap, that kind of thing. And when police entered the first time, they noticed that Kay, the mom, was wearing like this long black kind of leotard leather thing, which was very inappropriate for, I guess, a mother of five in the middle of the day, but each to their own in what they wear. But the police said that they noted that it looked like she was going to work in the strip club, but didn't look that like she was looking after children and when the police kept asking where's dean eventually mark came storming out of one of the rooms and they didn't even know that mark was there and he came storming angrily at police and started shouting at them and swearing at them but mark just said that dean ran away just like Kay said and police had to leave and later on yolani would describe what actually happened before police entered the house and she said that her dad mark was tipped off by someone near or maybe near the police station or who worked at the police station and he was tipped off and what he did was he he dipped dean into the pool in order to wash off all the blood and then he tried to hide dean inside the cupboards under the beds but he didn't fit and he was worried that the police would find him what he did was he took wooden paneling out of the roof and he shoved dean into the roof and Mark actually wanted to hide there with Dean as well. But he thought that Kay would kind of buckle under the pressure of all the policemen. So he made sure that he just shoved Dean in there, hit him and then came out. So obviously when police searched the house, they couldn't find Dean. And they left taking the three children and Yolandi with them. And when the police and social workers left, Kay and Mark actually dragged Dean back out of the ceiling and forced him to live with other family relatives. The heat was kind of off them for a while. And around a week after this happened, Kay and Dean were arrested. And eventually after all the questioning, Kay buckled under the pressure and she let police know where Dean went. And when police retrieved Dean from the family, they noticed that even a week after this all happened, Dean was still full of bruises and full of scarring. So imagine what kind of beating horrifically Mark did to Dean. So Mark was charged with the attempted murder of Dean, child abuse um, on five counts for all five children, and the sexual assault and attempted sexual assault of Yolani, as well as the obstruction of justice and child neglect and breaking the schools act. Kay was only charged with child abuse and child abandonment, as well as defeating the ends of justice. So when this all happened, Kay had actually been given a 2,000 Rand bail. So she was free at the time that Mark happened to have his trial. And the reason that she actually got the bail was because her attorney said that she was abused herself. So she really wasn't involved too much in what Mark had been doing to the children. And if it couldn't get any worse for the children, all of the children were staying with Kay's aunt and uncle. They were staying there until eventually it was released that Yolandi was actually being sexually abused by Kay's uncle. He was then charged with indecent assault against minors and he was then arrested and taken to prison. And while he was in prison, he did try to take his own life, but he failed. He was then taken to hospital where he actually escaped and 
Kay's uncle is still on the run. They don't know where he is. So he left his family and he evaded all of these charges against Jalandi. So because of this, all of the children were removed and they were separated. At first, they tried to keep the three younger siblings together. However, for one family to take on all of these children, especially children that had history of such abuse and neglect, it was very difficult for the young couple to look after them. So they were taken back into the government's care and then they were separated into different homes. Dean was taken into a special education home where they could kind of like board him as well. And I think he's still there, I'm not quite sure. But Yolandi said that she went through a very difficult time. She was also moved from home to home. And she said that she really struggled to connect with these people because she said that the way they interacted with her was so different to what she had grown up with. And eventually she was placed with a foster home or foster family that she really, really connected with. And she said that she didn't understand that this is what love and affection actually was because her whole life she never experienced any of that. I think some people may judge why they never ran away or something like that. But they, firstly, they were only children. Secondly, if that's all you know, that's all you know. And Yolandi eventually described her upbringing as abnormal and extremely vicious. And at first, when Yolandi was still being placed in these different foster homes, she was actually very upset with how the media was portraying her father and her mother. But when Yolandi actually started going to trial and she was placed with this foster family that she really loved, she started to realize the cracks in her family and the relationship between her mother and father. And what really upset Yolandi was that no matter what the prosecutors were saying about her father, her mother would always defend him, even when they were describing the horrific sexual abuse that her father had done to Yolandi, her mother didn't bat an eyelid. She was still sitting there staring lovingly at her husband. And when Mark actually went onto the stand, he said that the reason that he sexually assaulted Yolandi is that he believed that she was not actually his child and Kay had slept with someone else. And that was his reason for doing it because it wasn't even his family. Even when they spoke about the horrific abuse that Dean had gone through, Mark defended himself and said that Dean asked for it. He did things that pissed him off, basically, and Dean, it was his own fault. Even when Kay had her own trial, she even blamed Yolandi and Dean for the abuse that they had to take because she said that the children just pushed their father and that's what they must get for pushing their father's buttons. So eventually when Mark's trial concluded, he was found guilty of all the charges that were laid against him and Kay was only found guilty of child neglect. And the reason for that is that the prosecution and defense did agree that she had gone through a lot of abuse herself and they believed that she may have been suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. So in the end, Mark was only sentenced to 35 years in prison and Kay was given five years suspended sentence. So she is free. She is living her life. And Mark is actually in a new relationship with someone that he met in prison. Apparently this lady was going to visit someone else, but they happened to see each other and there was love at first sight. And with regards to Kay, she actually ended up marrying Mark's cousin and they had a baby girl together. I, I don't get why someone with this kind of history who was accused of child neglect, I mean, you can't say that they can't have children because that's their right, but I just, I hope that they at least come in to check and, you know, check that the child is still alright. And I'm sure that Mark's cousin is fine as a person. We don't know him, but you know, it's just weird. And with Yolandi, she is 21 years old at the moment, I think. And she graduated matric. With regards to Dean, Yolandi said that he's still struggling with everything that is happening. And I hope for Dean's sake that he kind of gets on the right track and he's able to break through everything that he had gone through as a child. And I hope that he has all the success as well, because obviously they all had a very difficult childhood. But that, in a nutshell, is everything that happened at the Springs House of Horror. This is kind of not really a murder, but it was still something horrific that happened in South Africa. And I'm sure it's still happening to many children in South Africa, So, which is quite sad and terrifying at the same time. But if you enjoyed the story, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I will see you again on Sunday and I hope you enjoyed it. Bye!